so I'm optimistic. I'm, we've got to be optimistic, John. We must be optimistic. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, I, uh, you know, one of the reasons I wrote the book is I want people in the West to wake up and to recognize the, the, the tremendous value of what we have here. But I also have to say, you know, I hope it's your children and grandchildren and my children and grandchildren who are the ones who are building that better society. And if we take responsibility, which we should do, for making sure that we are educating our mm. children correctly, which we haven't been for quite a long time, if they understand history, not just British history or colonial history, but history, John, history. History means context. It means you understand not only what the British Empire was doing in the 18th century, but also what the Russian Empire was doing in the 18th century mm. and what the Arab slave traders were doing while the Western colonial powers were engaging in the horrific uh, transatlantic slave trade. Mm. That's history. Mm. If we can teach our children that, if they can understand the context, I think there's a very real chance that the West can prosper again. I couldn't agree more because you've really hit on something that strikes me as really important here. Um, who says slavery is wrong? Where did that idea come from? Mm. It was endemic in just about every culture and every society across the world. And we're right here in the city where it was determined by a culture that it was wrong. Mm. And a massive investment was made in ending it, not just in this country, which is the most powerful on earth at the time, but in obliterating it everywhere else. But that part of the story is not told. It's contextualisation. So now we've got a move to de-statue, I understand, in Edinburgh, um, uh, the uh, uh, Livingston you know, the famous uh, African explorer Mm. and abolitionist Mm. on the basis that when he was 10 years old, effectively a a slave labourer, I suppose, he worked in a cotton factory and the cotton would have been produced by slaves. Mm. Where's the contextualisation? That's the point you're making. That is the point I'm making. I have a whole chapter about slavery in the book and I talk about my grandfather being taken a slave labourer to Germany the fact that, as I told you, my great grandfather, who was in the gulag as the engineer, do you remember we talked about yes, it earlier? Yeah. He served his sentence com- on completely spurious grounds of 10 years, and he was kept in the mm-hmm. camps for another three years because he was needed. Mm-hmm. He was a slave. Mm-hmm. And this was in living memory, right? So we shouldn't pretend that slavery um, is in any way unique to the West. Mm-hmm. It's an awful, awful thing, John. Uh, oh, but, but every society has engaged in it throughout history, and that's the context through which we need to look at ourselves. Uh, it's easier for me, being a dark-skinned immigrant, to talk about it, which is one of the reasons that I wrote the book, because I think there are plenty of people in the West who disagree and criticize and critique some of these cultural movements that we've seen. But I think as an outsider, I have perhaps a little bit more leeway, and, mm-hmm. and I can give a bit more context that people aren't necessarily aware of, because we've been guilt-tripped. We've been guilt tripped about our past. You you don't have any responsibility for things that happened 400 years ago. And I don't think anyone should feel guilt because of the color of their skin. Mm-hmm. I think the reintroduction of racialized thinking into our societies mm-hmm. is one of the worst things that we could do to ourselves. That's why I've been pushing back so strongly against mm-hmm. it. I don't want my black friends to be treated differently because they're black. And I don't want my white friends to be treated differently because they're white. And the fact that we now live in a society where it's become acceptable to say, oh, you're a white man or, or whatever. And that is somehow a dismissive thing that, that like that Im- implies with it that you have some sort of lower value in the hierarchy of who's allowed to express an opinion or whatever. Mm. I think it's outrageous. Mm. I think it's disgusting and I think it needs to end. And I am determined uh, that as a result of the conversations that we have on this show and you have on your show and the broader leaking of that into the public domain, because I think a lot of people are fed up of it, frankly, yeah. John, uh, I am determined that that ends. Yeah. We've got to go back to the point, and I, I sort of tweeted a quip about it the other day. I said, I, I, I have a dream that one day um, the, our ideas will be judged on their merit as opposed to the color of our skins. Yeah. We should be able to say what we think yeah. uh, and irrespective of where we come from, mm. That is the Western idea. That is, to me, why the West is worth preserving. It is the only part of the world, John, in the history of the world, where that idea has actually been embraced. Ever. Ever. And, you know, there are challenges with building multi-ethnic societies like the ones we have in the West. It's dealt very differently in other countries, as you know. In China, it's very different. In Russia, it's the same. Uh, Most of the rest of the world operates on a very simple basis. There is an ethnic group that is the dominant one of that society. Everybody else is some sort of second-class citizen. And that's the way that it is. We are trying to do better here. We're trying. 
desperately and it comes with difficulties and it comes with challenges and it comes with problems but we are desperately trying and we should be encouraged and celebrated for that not talked about like we're the worst people in the world because we're not it's the western liberal democracies that give people an opportunity to correct the things that need correcting mm. i think is what you're saying absolutely